it, that is the best method. Uh, it's better than doing nothing at all. Good. All right, David asks, you did not mention spine aligning the shafts prior to checking CPMs. Doesn't the CPM vary depending on the strength and position of the spine in the analyzer? Uh, I, I knew this uh, question would come up. I'm surprised it took the third one. Um, I really can't get over the subject, or can't go over the subject, because there's still a patent in place for aligning shafts called puring. If you want a spine or a flow, and that's short for flat line oscillation, that's going to be entirely up to you. But remember, if, if you do, the silk screen is going to be all over the place, and you're going to have to discuss that with your customer. But everything I mentioned previously in this webinar would still pertain to any orientation you wanted to do ahead of time on, on frequency sorting. Did I dance around that enough? Yeah, I thought that was, uh, I was waiting for that to be <laughs> one of the first questions, too. Your, it's always your favorite question. Do you recommend, this is from Lowell, do you recommend zone profiling? Uh, it's an, it, what he means by zone profiling is taking frequencies at different portions. That's, um, if you're just, I, I think from an R&D standpoint, that's good to, understand the differences between one shaft uh, model versus another. But as far as when you're building golf clubs, usually the, um, the shafts won't vary that much um, in their zones of like shafts. So you, you're just best off and taking your time just to do the, the simple butt frequency just for the sorting part. If you want to do the rest, that, that's great, but just use that more for R&D purposes. Okay, Joanne asks, how should you do the CPMs if they use graphite and steel? We have actually got a couple people asking that same question in a mixed set. Um, could you repeat that? He said, how should you do the CPMs if they use graphite and steel? Oh, um, okay. As a club maker, your only responsibility is to match like shafts. So let's say you have um, graph, and this would apply in a lot of in a lot of cases. Let's say you had some um, graphite hybrids for your three, four, and five, and you had steel shafts in your six through wedges. Well, what I would do, the the frequencies because they're two different shafts, don't have to match in in uh, continuity between the steel and the graphite. All you want to do is be able to put the, in the graphite grouping, you have three shafts. Put the most flexible in your longest hybrid, and your shortest hybrid, put the stiffest. And then with the steel shafts, the, um, those you want to put in that same order. Hopefully, you've done your due diligence and had been fitted for those shafts, so they're already going to fit you, or you've done, you know, there's a rhyme and reason why the shafts won't be the same frequency, um, because they're different materials and different weights. And that's a good explanation. Okay, Chick asks, what are your thoughts on using zone frequencies? Okay. Zone frequencies. I, again, this is, I think that's more for um, research and development. Uh, figuring out the differences between two different shafts, but I don't, th I wouldn't go through all the extra effort of placing the frequency analyzer six inches and another one 12 inches or whatever it might be on the shaft when you could just simply butt trim it, put the frequency or the the um, the chuck or your uh, tip weight on just one place and and sub sort them, and you can even do it by weight as well. I just feel that if you're doing zone frequency like that to sort shafts, sort, you know, a grouping of shafts, um, it's only going to take up time that you could be using doing something else. All right, good. Rick asks, should we always follow a manufacturer's tip trimming instructions or use one half inch tip trim? Um, you don't have to follow the tip trimming. 
um, all the time, understand the, the, the differences. For example, if a shaft is all butt trim, you may not be able to tip trim in half inch increments because that shaft may only have like two or three inches of parallel tip section and once you start to tip trim the shaft, um, the shaft's no longer going to fit in the hosel. Uh, but in all honesty, if, if, if you want to deviate, that's fine. Just understand the, the cause and effect relationship. The more you trim, the stiffer it is. The less you trim, the more flexible it is in, in relationship to what the manufacturer had intended that shaft to be. Okay, Rob asks, how much weight should there be between each of the raw iron heads? Uh, it depends. In, in, if you're talking about irons, they've been seven uh, gram increments for a long, long time because from a swing weighting standpoint, this usually yields a uh, or maintains a, a normal swing weight range, but because of the variations in the uh, the balance point of the shaft, um, even if you have perfect seven gram increments, they won't um, necessarily end up being swing weight matched. And then there's also other golf or um, club makers out there that uh, like to build to moment of inertia. And they may find that it might be closer to 8 grams difference per club if they're building clubs in half-inch in increments. All right, good. Cliff asked a good question here. Am I to understand that the actual quality of, say, a commercial-grade shaft is no different than, say, a more expensive shaft like the Project X? Only the time spent in measuring and sorting before sales. Mm, they're different shafts. Uh, in, in that case, because you're, the Project X are actually uh, non-stepped, you have um, much higher tolerances in them. Plus, they also go through additional uh, QC steps. There's internal rifling on, on them. The, uh, I'm talking more about commercial grade shafts versus maybe um, other first quality shafts like TT Light or Dyna Light or uh, like the old Dynamic. Uh, dynamic Gold, for example, was no more different from a Dynamic shaft in the, in the construction, but because it went through the additional uh, weight sorting um, process, that's why it became more expensive. Okay, John, that's a pretty common question here. Good question. Do you have a uh, general comment on choice of steel shaft versus composite for irons versus woods or different players? Or is this a topic for a full webinar? <laughs> um, no, that's a, I mean, that's basically a good fitting question. Um, uh, I guess you could take a, a, diff a couple different ways here. Um, for certain golfers, they may not have an issue with um, with the lightness of graphite, and, and, and graphite can actually be just as heavy as steel.